Welcome to STEM Challenges with Mr. Geyer, where we design, build, and create. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to welcome you to the first STEM activity at Alcumberry Middle High School. Uh, carrying forward, we're going to be doing these every single month throughout each month. And hopefully they'll be able to be something simple that you can interact and do at home or just sit and listen, watch along and get the information that we're talking about. So in the spirit of February, we know that we have Valentine's. So today we are gonna use our Cupid's bow and his arrow to talk about a little bit behind the physics and science of how this arrow flies through the air. So first, we're gonna have to talk about what is going to go into our bow and arrow. So we have our rubber bands, which are creating tension. And when this tension is released, it is using one of Newton's laws. And that law is the third law of of motion. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the action of us letting go of this rubber band creates an action of the bow going forward. So that is the equal reaction. So as much force as you can get out of your bow is as much force is going to be transferred into our arrow and make it fly. And when you have this arrow flying through the air, it is going to have a couple different forces acting upon it. So I made this very nice diagram. We got a nice little stick man here. And this is going to show us a little bit about what forces act upon our arrow as it flies through the air. So the same thing can be applied to airplanes, rockets, basically anything that is in a projectile motion or flying or moving through the air. And technically, uh, it's the same actions that are happening to fish and anything underwater as well. So we have a couple different things. Uh, the four main forces are labeled here with arrows. So every time you have something up in the air, there's this crazy thing called gravity pulling you down. And this gravity, which is going to be this downward arrow, is always pulling down at the same rate. Yes, you have different weights, but the rate is always the same. So depending if you're using a pencil as your arrow, or if you're using a straw with some pipe cleaners in it, or if you're using a Q-tip, there's a couple different things that you have to think about. Each one has a different weight to it, so each one is going to fly differently. Each one is going to have a different force acting upon it because of the changing of what they are. So one of the things we have to think about when we launch our arrow out of our bow is what these four forces are. So the four forces, one being gravity, then you have one that makes it fly, which is called lift. And then from our bow, when we launch it with Newton's third law, we're gonna get thrust And then for our other one, our last one, it's gonna be all the air and friction and everything that's pushing onto our arrow, which is called drag. So those are our four forces that act upon our arrow as it's flying through the air. So those are some things that we're gonna approach when we go to build our bow and arrows. So on the PowerPoint that you guys have. It has four different versions of the bow and arrow depending on what materials you have. Um, there's ones made out of spoons, there's ones made out of plastic knives, there's ones made out of just pencils, and then there's ones made out of uh, wooden sticks and string and dental floss and q-tips. So depending on what you have around the house, I tried to make it as manageable as possible. So go ahead and take a look at the couple different versions and I am going to show you how to build uh, those versions as well through a video. So go ahead, take a look, and then we will meet back up and I will kind of go over some things that you might have some trouble with.
So now that you've seen a couple different designs, you're gonna have to sit there and ask yourself what the problem is and what is the best solution for you in this situation. So our problem is, is that Cupid lost his bow and he needs a new engineer to craft him a new bow. So you are now being hired as his new engineer to craft him a bow for Valentine's. So this bow has to meet his qualifications of being able to fire his arrow at whatever he needs to fire it at. So there's two different ways you can test this. Uh, th the first way is going for distance. So you can fire a couple times, see how you can change and modify your bow and arrow to get a better distance. You can also do it for accuracy. So for the accuracy part, you can either print out a piece of paper with the target on it, or you can draw the target onto something or if you have a nice whiteboard or something like that at home, you can do Expo markers and make that as well. Um, with that challenge, you can fire it a couple different times. If you're going against somebody, you can uh, set a certain number of tries that you have. Realistically, what I have done is I said to set them at five. So set it at five, take as many uh, shots of those five as you can and hit the target as many times as you want and then you add up the points after that. So once we have done all of that and figured out how things are working, you're gonna sit there and modify and change things with your bow and arrow before you actually go ahead and do that challenge. So when you are firing your arrow, you're gonna have a couple different issues. You're gonna have some issues where your arrow leaves your bow and then it might go off to the left, it may go off to the right, it may go straight up, it may go straight down. There's a couple different things that can be happening. And that's all because of this star gravity drag and lift that are acting upon it. So when you have your rubber band and your bow and your arrow all put together and you're testing it out, sometimes if you have a lighter arrow, it's gonna affect how it flies because you have so much force forcing this out at once that it may just have the tendency to go straight up in the air and fly back down, especially if you're doing this outside because of the wind. And that's because of drag and lift acting together. So the lift gets under it and the drag keeps pushing over it and then it flies back around and who knows where it could go. It goes behind you, to the side, left, right, wherever it's going. So this is sometimes an issue when you are using the Q-tips or a straw with the pipe cleaners, what you can do is add more weight to it by wrapping it with tape or just moving to the pencil option because it's a little bit heavier. So if your object is heavier and your rubber bands are really strong, then you'll be able to get to go really far. If you're using one of the smaller versions with the string and the dental floss, uh, it won't have as much force when you are firing your uh, bow. So those are some problems that you might come into. Another thing might be the feathers, the quivers that you made at the end. It might be catching on something when you go to flyer. So it might be hitting the side of it and then going out like that. So what you can try to do is try to line it up so they're, they're directly sideways with the stick itself instead of being against it where it hits it as it's flying off. Uh, depending on which version you made or what you're using, every solution is going to be different. So you're going to be troubleshooting your issues as you go along. With that said, there's many different ways that you can approach a situation and many ways to find a solution. So if you didn't like the first way that you made your solution, then go back to the drawing board, see what else you have and modify it. These are not the only options, just like in any engineering problem, there are hundreds of different ways to solve a problem. And your first attempt at it may not always be the best. So try it again and see what you can change and then you're always learning as you do things. So you learn through what fails and then you can change your design and engineer something better each time. Thank you for joining in this month for the STEM night. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I can't wait to see you guys all back next month. So in spirit of March, we are going to have our theme as March Madness. 
So get ready to shoot a basketball into your very own hoop that you design and create.